and welcome to the first of two tutorials on how to use audio to control effects and parameters in our project. The reason that there are two tutorials is the first one I call workmanlike, it gets the job done. The second one I call the more elegant approach because if you have a very complex project it's a much easier way to organize things but if you have a simple project a workmanlike approach will work. Okay, so what do I have in my project? I have one shape layer, and that shape layer is a polystyle which has been modified and animated to move across the screen and rotate and what have you over 10 seconds. Now what I want is I want this polystyle to flash on and off in time to music. I have music here, which is from Adobe Sound Booth, free music. Drag it down, let's have a quick listen by hitting the full stop key on the numpad. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to create keyframes from this audio layer. So if you select the layer, you can go up to the animation menu, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes is the only option you have. Click on that, a new layer is created and there are three effects in the effects section. That is the left channel, the right channel and both channels, which are keyframes of all of those individual channels. If you want to see what they look like, select whichever one you want and open up the graph editor and you'll see what they look like. We are going to use the both channel slider. I've checked them all out and I think both channels works the best so I'm going to hit left, hit delete, right, hit delete, select this and then with my mouse hovering over this panel I'm going to hit the tilde key to maximize the panel. Now I can have a little look at what we have. Now if I want this polystar to flash on and off I need to decide what level it is going to be off and what level it's going to be on. And looking at this I think if it's over 20 it really ought to be on and say if it's below 15 it probably ought to be off so our dynamic range if you like is 15 to 20 it's not huge when you look at this file it means there'll be absolutely nothing for the first two seconds but then it will come on just before two seconds and flash on and off for the rest of our production okay so I'm gonna hit the tilde key to minimize that again we've decided what our dynamic range is I'm going to turn off the graph editor so what do I want to control? Well I'm going to control two things on this shape layer. I'm going to control an effect and I'm going to control something on the shape layer itself. The effect I'm going to control is going to be glow. So select the layer, go to effect, stylize, glow and that's applied and that looks great. Now the first thing I'm going to do just because it's going to look better when it flashes on and off I'm going to increase the glow radius to about 50, 60, 70, 80 just so that when it comes on it looks quite powerful. But what I really want to play with is the glow intensity. Now if I just open up the glow intensity you will see that the actual range is 0 to 4. However we've already said that the output is going to be between 15 and 20 which is just a range of 5. So what I need to do is I need to do some mapping. Now let me just explain with this illustrator file. This is my audio waveform and it's quite a wide range. This is its maximum, which at the moment we're saying is 20, and the minimum, which we're saying is 15. I need to map that so that when it comes out of the channel, what it's actually saying is anything equivalent to 15 here is equivalent to 0 here, and anything that's equivalent to 20 here is equivalent to 4 here. So our glow radius is 0 to 4. Our audio range that we want to use is 15 to 20. I need to map these to these levels. How do I do that? I need to apply an expression. So I'm going to apply an expression to this slider that's going to say to the slider, OK slider, anything that is below 15 must come out as 0 and anything that's above 20 must come out at 4 and anything in between can be anywhere between 0 and 4. To apply the expression you ALT click on the stopwatch and then we type linear open bracket value. Now value is actually referring to whatever is coming out of this slider. So this slider's value we saw in the graph editor could be anything from 0 all the way up to 40. So the value is whatever this slider is at any moment in time. So what we're doing is we're mapping that value. So after value we put a comma and we say what the minimum value is. Well the minimum we wanted to use was 15 and the maximum comma maximum was 20 and we want to map that to so we put another comma 0 
and comma four close bracket so what I'm saying is whatever this value is if the value is 15 or below it must equate to 0 and if it's 20 or above it must equate to 4 and then we hit return on our number pad on our keyboard not our main keyboard to apply that effect and that effect is now applied and I can shut down the graph editor but nothing has happened as yet because we haven't actually applied it to the effect so let's open up our shape layer and then let's decide we want to change the glow intensity so what we can do is we can alt click on glow intensity and in our timeline down here I'm just going to move it up so you can see it in the timeline down here glow intensity has got a little expression applied and then take the pick whip and grab it up to the slider that we have just modified with the expression and let go and then we can go to that and hit return on our number pad and it is now applied and we can do a quick RAM preview. Well, that's great. That's given us the glow, but it certainly hasn't made it go on and off. We need to do something else to do that. Now, before we go any further, we need to be careful to name our layers. We know that this layer is controlling the glow intensity. So what we can do is hit return and just call it glow intensity and hit return again and now we know what that layer is doing now the next thing we want to control is the width of this stroke so we take our glow intensity control D to duplicate it and immediately rename it stroke width and hit return now let's have a little look at our stroke width let's go all the way down to our polystyle which is open here we can go down to its stroke open up its stroke and we can see that the stroke is presently 9. Now our mapping output said if it was below 15 it had to be 0, if it was above 20 it had to be 4. So that would mean at above 20 the stroke width would only be 4 and it would be much thinner, but we want it to be 9. So we need to alter our expression for stroke width. So let's open up this layer and scroll down and find out where it is. Both channels and there's our expression. All we need to do is change the 4 to 9. The maximum of the stroke width. So what are we now saying? We're saying okay whatever value is coming out from this slider when it is 15 or below it must equal 0. When it is 20 or above it must equal 9. We hit return on our number pad and that expression is applied and then we need to go all the way back down to our stroke width again just here. Alt click that to create an expression. Take the pick whip and drag it up to the slider for stroke width saying to the stroke width you are being controlled your daddy the one who is dragging you around will be the values that come out from this slider let go hit return on our number pad and then do another RAM preview So that's done what we wanted it to do. It's making it flash on and off in time to the music. The glow's coming on nice and intensely each time it hits a beat. And that's achieved the purposes. It's a work night response. It does what we want to do. Problem is, with this particular approach, is if you have lots and lots and lots of things you want to control with this audio, you end up with loads and loads of layers in your timeline. Now, admittedly, you could shy them and get rid of them, but it's much better to have one controller layer and to have a whole number of controllers in your effects controller up here that are controlling the bits and pieces in our shape layer. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to do the same thing but with one single control layer and show you how you can do that to make a slightly more tidy project. I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching.